That's great. Well, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, now it is. It was it had a delay. Okay. Are we, are we good now? The mic on? Yeah. Um, mic set on. Sorry. Okay, we're good. Oh. Right. Hello again, maybe. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, us. Uh, I, I have the rest of my family here in the room. Thank you for being here present. Uh, thank you for being here virtually or after the fact, uh, tuning in. I appreciate it. I'm going to keep chattering a little bit. Hopefully someone will comment, live comment, and let me know, one, that you can see the video, and two, that you can hear me. That would be wonderful. Um, anyway, thank you so much for coming. Um, when the pandemic got going uh, and things started shutting down in March, you know, one of the most obvious things was that work and school um, came home. Um, and that was a certain adjustment. Um, but one of the other adjustments for musicians is that we can't congregate together to make music um, with each other and then to perform for um, an audience. And, um, you know, that was like a bummer. Um, and so then I, I, I was like, well, I, I could just play my horn. Um, and I found it really difficult to play, practice the horn uh, while under shelter in place. And, and I it took me a little while to figure out why. Um, but really, um, I, I think I, I figured out that when I play the horn, it's with the purpose of gathering with other musicians, making music, and then eventually sharing that communion with an audience. Um, and that, that not having that, those aspects of making music for, on the horn was really uh, difficult for me, uh, and, I, and I think for a lot of my fellow musicians. Um, whereas actually the piano, I've almost always played it exclusively just for myself. Um, and so it was actually really easy to sit down and play the piano during the pandemic because it's like, it's just like sitting down and playing the piano at any other time. Uh, when I was a kid and taking lessons, I did a few concerts, but I never played music, you know, piano with other people. Um, anyway, so uh, I came up with this idea of doing a virtual concert um, so that I had a virtual audience to, to look forward to. So thank you for being here. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, this first piece I'm going to play, um, I'm going to uh, tip my hat to Chris Knowles for suggesting it. It's called Fantasy for Horn. It's by Malcolm Arnold. Um, and I played this piece like in high school and stuff, um, but it was really great to have a chance to actually work on it. So I hope you enjoy. Hold on one second. Do we get any confirmation in the chat? Awesome. Whew.
is that we actually invested in a new piano in uh, February. Um, and we had had this old upright, it was like a, a what do you call those? Um, player. player piano um, that had been converted into a regular piano. It was enormous. It had, you know, the wrought iron frame on the inside. Um, and we, we did some shuffling around of our house back in January. It was clear that there wasn't a spot for this behemoth. Um, and so we passed it on. Uh, and then invested in this piano, which is actually a digital piano. It's it's got the the all the mechanical action of a traditional upright, but instead of having strings that the hammers are striking, it's got the sensors. So it actually feels very much like a piano, which is wonderful. It also means I can like plug in headphones um, and play it whenever, um, which is, has been really great. But it also means that I can play a piano part and then play it back and play a horn part. So there's two pieces. Um, uh, on this program that um, I've done that way. Um, but I've actually played piano for longer technically than I've played the horn, but I only took lessons through early high school and then I just, I didn't have enough time to really focus on it. But through like my late twenties, I still really, um, still really uh, played piano a lot. Um, and then, you know, with the family and um, work and stuff, it's uh, just, it sort of fell on the side. But so it's been really wonderful to sort of re rekindle uh, the passion I have for the piano. The first piece I'm gonna play on the piano uh, is a uh, conglomeration um, of Furalise and Take Five. Um, and Furalise is by Beethoven, uh, very classical, three, four, uh, Take Five, very jazzy, five, four. So um, you'll see what happens there. It's uh, by a, a composer called Sid R. Duke, who I believe is British because I had to pay in pounds to get the sheet music. Uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
Thank you. Um, okay, sorry, I took notes, so I like tried to keep all the things that I wanted to get said said. Um, so this next piece I'm going to play um, is by Lars Eric Larson. Uh, Larson. Uh, it's called Concertino, and I, I believe I've, I've uh, in high school I learned it and I used it for like auditions and stuff. But I don't think I've actually performed anything except maybe the second movement where. Uh, my dad, hi dad, um, actually accompanied me um, and we played for the offertory at church. Um, and it's, it, it's a beautiful movement. Um, uh, I hope you agree with me. Um, and uh, Larson actually wrote, I think, 12 concertinos, all for different instruments. And for those of you that don't know, composers often understand the instruments that they play themselves, but it, it can be difficult to, to write for other um, instruments. And, and so it's pretty impressive that um, that he wrote 12 for 12 completely different instruments. Um, anyway, uh, it's just a piece that I love, um, and I hope you enjoy it as well. It's going to take me a, just a second to set up here. No. There we go. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm just going to take a minute to dump my horn as well, because there was some gurgling earlier. See, this is why you need like a conductor to like talk in between pieces. There is a purpose for conductors. <laughs> Besides ego. Besides, right. <laughs> I'm giving conductors a bad rap, but they actually are. Uh, they, they do sort of good purpose beyond giving us a break in between pieces. Thank you. 
different genres of music on piano um, when I was taking lessons as a kid. It was all classical and that kind of morphed into ragtime when I stopped playing, um, taking lessons because I really enjoy the genre um, and the kind of mechanics of, of ragtime are really fun. And I did that through college. I probably annoyed my poor college <laughs> roommates and doormates because um, I played it all the time, every day. Um, and then uh, when I got my first piano after I got out of college, um, I had heard some Chopin, and specifically Chopin noc Nocturnes, so I got a book of Chopin Nocturnes, and that became the next sort of era of genre um, that, that I, I play on the piano. Uh, so this is, um, unfortunately, Chopin does not name his pieces nicely. So this one is Opus 9, number 2 in E-flat major. Um, but it's a beautiful, um, uh, it's just a beautiful uh, piece of music, so I thought I would play it for you. I 
also just need to say I'm really hot right now. This is the most, look, I, I even have shoes on. I mean, there's a lot of clothing, so, but it's all for you. I just, I'm gonna out my family for a second. They're all wearing pajamas. So I just, I need extra credit for- No, I'm not wearing pajamas. I'm just wearing smart So this next piece um, is like a brand spanking new piece, which is like, I, as a musician, is super exciting. Um, it's by a composer uh, named Amy Dunker, who is a uh, professor of music at Clark University. I will not try to give you her, her credentials, um, uh, but her website is amydunker.com, A-M-Y-D-U-N-K-E-R. Um, and in the wake of Ruth Bader Ginsburg's death, um, she wrote this piece um, called When There Are Nine. Um, and I think actually the, the sort of subtitle is actually very um, important as well, A Fanfare of Hope. Um, I just wanted to read what um, she wrote, the, the notes that she wrote about this. When there are nine is a fanfare of hope for the kind of equality that Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg worked, worked so diligently towards. It was a quote from um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. When I'm sometimes asked, when, when will there be enough women on the Supreme Court? And I say, when there are nine, people are shocked. But there'd been nine men, and nobody's ever raised a question about that. Um, 
so I present to you when there are nine, and actually this is one of the two pieces that I recorded the piano part for. So this is all Tyler all the time now. And this will be a little bit awkward for a minute. So um, uh, I mentioned that, that one of the things that was challenging about Shelter in Place was not being able to get together with uh, my musical friends and make music together. And so a few months into this, when we realized that it was going to be a while before we could get congregate uh, in the large groups indoors that, that we're used to, um, a lot of us started trying to figure out how to do some uh, you know, safe um, uh, gatherings of, of much smaller groups. Um, and so I invited uh, Chris Nalls and Florette Seven to come and play uh, trios on our deck. Uh, and that was a blast, despite the fact it was super cold, windy Brisbane day. Um, and so uh, we then invited Joe Kelly to join us to do quartets, because it was actually like a huge repertoire for one quartet. 
Um, so uh, we've been meeting about once a week since, I don't know, it's been months now. Um, and I, I just want to thank the three of you. This has been one of the saving, uh, emotional, uh, uplifting things um, uh, uh, that really makes me feel rejuvenated every week. Um, so I appreciate that. So when I mentioned that I was doing a concert, they're like, oh, we should record something. So uh, if my uh, audiovisual person could get off their phone, um, we're going to see <laughs> for free number four uh, as uh, played by the Spaced Out Horn Quartet. All right, so thanks again, uh, Chris, Florette, and Joe. Um, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Um, so this next piece um, was one of the first pieces I uh, thought about working up um, for this concert that I would play piano, record piano on, and then play on the horn. Um, and while I, I have some piano skills, I, I don't have the um, sort of extensive chamber music um, uh, experience and, and performance experience, and so um, learning new music is, is harder for me on piano than, than horn. And anyway, I wanted to pick something that I felt confident that I could get under my fingers and uh, play well enough that I wasn't going to screw myself up on horn trying to follow along. Um, and so I went back through a bunch of books that I had from when I was first learning horn uh, to look at solo horn and piano uh, and found this Schumann uh, trauma ray. Trauma ray means uh, reverie um, or, or dream. Um, and uh, it's, I believe it was originally written for piano. I meant to look that up and confirm. So I'm sure if I'm wrong, I'll get called out. Um, but uh, it's been arranged for like a bazillion um, things. It was just a really beautiful piece. And so I thought it'd be nice to uh, put it on the, on the show, so. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you. 
started Shelter in Place, um, Ruth and I watched a movie, uh, Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, the, the one about the relationship between Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers, and Floyd Focal, uh, who was a, a journalist who was assigned uh, to write a piece and, and, and interview Fred Rogers. And um, Floyd Focal came in very skeptical about Mr. Rogers. Um, he sort of felt like Mr. Rogers must have this persona of acceptance and compassion and kindness, um, but there must be something underneath there which was very much not that. Um, and, uh, and so when w one of the scenes, he asked Mr. Rogers, well, don't you get angry? Mr. Rogers was like, yeah, sure, I get angry. He's like, well, what do you do with that anger? And he said, I go to the, the piano and I bang on all the low notes and just smash them. And that's how I get out, um, get out that anger. Um, and this next piece I'm gonna play for you by Chopin reminds me of that. And, and not that it's mashing uh, on, the, on the low notes, but there's this rolling um, movement in the, in the left hand that feels like he's trying to let out um, some big emotion. Um, anyway, I'm curious to see if you all uh, have that same impression of this piece. So this one, again, catchy to, uh, name, Chopin's Opus 72, <laughs> number one in E minor. Remember that for later. <coughs> there will be a Clearly, I couldn't pass the test, but.
um, so this next piece, um, actually, I was unaware of it, um, and I'm going to try and figure out uh, what I'm doing over here for a second. Um, ooh, I might have figured out how to do it without making it loud. Woo. Um, uh, this next piece is one that I was unaware of until I um, started looking for um, horn and piano um, piano accompaniments um, so that I could play along with something. Um, and it's by a composer, Gilbert Ginter. It's called Hunter's Moon. Uh, it was written in the 40s, so like, you know, it's existed as long as I've been playing the horn, but I just had never heard it. Uh, and it was just such a delight to like go look it up on YouTube and be like, wow, this is like such a cool piece. Um, so I decided that I, I wanted to play it for y'all. I should have been um, emptying my horn while I was talking. That would have been very efficient, but uh, clearly I'm a novice at this. Um, so we'll just take a moment here to dump out some condensation. It's not spit, it's condensation. My family's not laughing. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was that? I couldn't hear it. I'm like spit. <laughs> oh, I'm just spacing. Winter, Hunter's Moon. Thank <laughs> you. 
Scott Joplin. It's called Bethina. Um, and it's one that um, I learned, I, I, I think I started learning it in sixth grade. Um, and uh, I don't, uh, I've been learning classical music um, in my lessons, uh, but my dad, who also plays piano, um, had this big book of Joplin and he would play stuff. And this tune just struck me. Um, and so I was determined to learn it. And I, I think it probably took me a year. I, I did like a couple of uh, bars at a time to get it on my fingers and learn how to do the um, walking um, uh, bass line in, in the left hand. Um, but it's, it's just a, a piece that I, I um, really, really love, and I, I want to play you um, the tune because it, it has words to it in, in my ear. So. To me, I hear, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go home. Um, so whenever I play this piece, I, I have that feeling of um, being home. And I don't know if it's just because I learned it when I was in my first home um, that I remember. But um, anyway, uh, my last offering to you is uh, Scott Joplin's Bethina.
show <clears throat> and thank all of you for uh, joining us either uh, live virtually or after the fact. Uh, I really appreciate you being an audience. Um, uh, it means so much to me. Um, so uh, I just a, a few quick uh, thank yous, but um, I also did some credits because I know I'm going to like forget things. I uh, just want to thank my family. They've been listening to me play this music for <laughs> months now. They're probably sick of these tunes. Um, they're probably looking forward to some new tunes happening starting tomorrow. Um, and uh, particularly Ash has been running our audiovisual here. I really appreciate that. Um, and uh, just a big shout out to um, all my teachers. Uh, big shout out to Chris, Florette, and, and Joe for uh, playing horn quartets and recording something for this. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, the same URL you used to listen to this live will be the same thing in a couple hours uh, for the recorded video as well. So uh, feel free to share it. Feel free to watch. Um, and uh, thank you. Have a great day.